In today's episode of the Budget Makerspace project, we're looking at our overall setup for all the components that we've purchased or scavenged, and we're gonna see how it all comes together. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Views and welcome back to another episode of the Budget Makerspace project in which we're trying to put together a makerspace with tools and 3D printers and, and computers for $500 US or less or basically less than an Xbox One X gaming console. And we're, we're up to the point where we're putting it all together. So in previous episodes, we've talked about 3D printers that we, we were selecting. We've talked about different tools you can get very cheap. And then we talked about the computer setup. But in this episode, we're talking about the setup of the space. We've got all the equipment now. Now we need to be able to use it for our project. So I thought it'd be a good starting point to talk about the computer. We got this machine uh, completely scrounged. In our previous episode, I found the, the tower in the dump. And uh, these ones by the side of the road, these monitors, these very old Dell monitors. I'm not sure where these uh, mice came from. But basically I've got it all set up running Windows 10 and I've installed various free bits of software like Fusion 360 and various free slices. And you can go check that video out if you've missed it, but I've got it all set up on this table. Now, this is free. Um, let, me, let me make it very clear that you can get furniture for free very easily because this isn't very good quality. It's chipped, it's damaged, and uh, that's usually enough for people to say, this is unsightly in my house, I wanna get rid of it. If you're building a low-end sort of workshop style space, you want crappy furniture because you're going to drip solder onto it, you're going to damage it, and over time, you know, you're going to <laughs> rip it apart. So you want this sort of thing. So it's very easy to get free furniture. So that's my first tip. Look at council throwouts, local uh, depots, or even friends who might be upgrading their furniture. But uh, another thing I like about this old sort of style computer desk is it has a sliding tray, which I've put my sketchbooks and calipers and measuring utensils. So, when I design things, I like to draw. Uh, I always tell people before you design anything, you should actually grab a pen, a piece of paper or whatever, and just draw. This notepad's probably a little bit too high end for our budget makerspace project, but it's what I use. Uh, but also what I like to do sometimes is actually get the cheapest paper I can and these things, which are kitty, <laughs> kitty markers. So I use this all the time because I don't feel like I value the paper or the pens. So it really lets my sort of ideas run wild. And uh, if you've got a bit of a, a hesitation to draw your ideas and write things down, I highly recommend going with that. Just the just cheap scrapbook paper. And it really sort of lets you, you know, cut loose without worrying about the overall expenses of expensive notepads and that sort of thing. But this is my design station and let's go to the other room where our 3D printer and tools are all set up in our budget maker space. All right guys, so here I have our 3D printer and tools set up on our budget maker space workbench. And before I proceed, I do wanna, do wanna stress that this is an experiment for me. I already have access to a lot of equipment. So what you end up with might be different or it will definitely be different to what I've got set up here. But I've tried to keep it as true to the concept as possible. I mean, you're not gonna end up with uh, high-end branded uh, T Allen keys, but you're probably gonna end up with a cheap low-end printer like this Tronxy X1. So I've tried to keep it as true to the concept as possible. But first, let's talk about storing our tools. So you notice I've got this sort of pegboard at the back here and this table. This is a very, very cheap table that I picked up from my local Kmart and it folds out and I got this pegboard from my local hardware store. I just bolted it to the table with some L brackets and then got these very small, very handy metal uh, tool holders. It's a work in progress. As I use this space, it'll slowly evolve to where I want the tool holders to be. But essentially, you can just grab whatever you want and take them out, put them back in place. I even have some magnets down here that I sca scavenged from another project. So for example, magnetic tools like, you know, uh, a Stanley knife, that sort of thing, can easily be accessible. And I like having the tools in this situation instead of in a drawer or toolbox like hidden away because as you're working on pro projects on this space you want things within reach and I always find with toolboxes you take them out of the toolbox and then they just never go back in they just end up spread everywhere whereas at least with this there's a place for the tools to live which is very handy in keeping it organized but also accessible. Now let's talk about storage so I mentioned storage in our previous videos but I've got this just small little uh, drawer system here and I use this to store small components for the 3D printers, spare parts, and ongoing projects. I really like this design because you can actually pull out the drawers 
and then you can put them back in. So you can put them onto the workbench, especially if you're assembling a printer. I find it really handy for that, that way to keep the nuts and bolts in one spot without losing them. So I highly recommend those, they're quite low end. And also you can get other things, other smaller containers to store away for longer term storage for projects. So let's talk about the printer for a minute. As I mentioned, this is the Tronxy X1 or Tron XY X1, whatever. Um, and I have a spool holder that I've printed for it because by, from, by design it doesn't have a spool holder on it. And uh, as one of your first projects, that's something I recommend printing. Now this is the simple spool holder, I'll link it in the video description. Um, it just fits on the build volume. So it's a pretty challenging print, but once you print this, I use them all the time to hold filament for the projects that I'm printing. And it's just a really, really good way to keep your filament organized. Next, I wanna to touch on power and safety of power and uh, power boards. I did have a recent scare with mains voltage. It was, wasn't as bad as I originally thought it was, but nonetheless, you do not want to cheap out on a quality protected power board. So I'm actually using one designed for servers. Uh, I got, I've had it for years actually. It's, uh, it's designed for servers and computers and it actually has a protection circuit inside to protect anything running on it and also a fault detection if there's a problem with the line. There's a red light that will light up if there's any issues with the main supply which is very very handy and it has a switch which is critical for these sort of printers because the adapters don't really turn off. Um, they'll always be on. There's no switch on the printer itself. So having a switch on the power board means when you're done, you can just turn it off. And again, going back to our other tools like our soldering iron, this soldering iron does not have any uh, switch on it. So it's really good practice when you're finished with your projects, you're done for the day, turn the power board off, lights are off, nothing can stay on and cause any damage. Carrying on from our discussion of safety, I need to mention smoke alarms. Now this place is actually fitted with hardwired smoke alarms in the roof, so I don't have a battery powered one here, but if you do not have hardwired smoke alarms, you need to get a battery powered one and put it near your 3D printing workspace because things can go wrong, things can smoke up, and it's very, very cheap insurance to catch a small fire or smoke uh, from a from our function as it's starting, rather than figuring out later that something's gone wrong and there's a fire, because things can get really bad very quickly when fires spread. So you need a smoke alarm, you need a fire extinguisher, a cheap powder one is most likely fine, depending on what the type of fire, but a cheap powder one will get you covered for most situations. And also I recommend a fault detector. I mentioned in my recent electricity video, which I said uh, I had a bit of a scare. It's a good way to sort of check the power points to make sure they're wired up correctly. And something you also need is the safety goggles. So I have a pair here that are always on my workbench. I actually have heaps of pairs. Um, these are really cheap. They're you know, not the best quality, but they protect your eyes. So if you're drilling, cutting, even removing filament uh, wisps and support material from your prints. Let me demonstrate. This is a piece of PLA that's been sitting around for a while and you know it's really <laughs> really brittle um, and if you're breaking away supports of PLA it can shatter very quickly so definitely need a pair of safety goggles or safety glasses. Keep them at all times on your workbench. So that about wraps it up how I've set up my budget makerspace using the tools, 3D printers and equipment that I spec'd out in the previous episodes of this series. And the next video, we're gonna run through our first project using our budget makerspace and that will be a headphones holder. So this is a really simple design. I'll show you how to draw it in Fusion 360 and it actually simply and safely holds headphones on the edge of your desk and this is invaluable when you need to keep your expensive headphones safe while you're designing, you know, working on your PC. Put them on the table on the side, they're not gonna get in the way. And it's a very easy and simple project to get you started in the wonderful world of 3D printing. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please do hit that subscribe button. And if you don't wanna miss the next episode of the Budget Makespace series, hit the bell icon as well so you'll be notified. My name's Angus, and I'm here to empower your creativity with 3D printing. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Rockets into deep space. He has placed satellites into water.